What's up everybody? Thanks for joining. Welcome back to another episode of Morgs Brew. You're here with me. Today we're going to be talking about my ramp pump valve design. So stick around while I show you all the skeletons I have in my closet and how you guys can avoid them. Let's go! Thank you for all the new subscribers that have joined this channel. We've just hit a thousand subs. Wow, I never thought I'd get here. So I've got to say a big shout out to all you guys that are out there looking to brew your own alcohol. My brewing videos seem to be the videos that got me going, but uh, I need to go back to my roots, my ram pumps where I started. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit about the background of the ultimate ram pump design. If you haven't seen my ram pump, I'll stick a link up in the video up top there, or it's up on that side. Never get this right to figure it out as I go along. But anyways, what I have here in front of you, in front of me, in front of you, both of us, it's in front of the both of us, Ram pump valve design is going to cost you money unless you listen to a couple of the tricks I've got to tell you today. A lot of the internet has got these swing check valves. Understand that this is a swing check. It's got a one way that's going to go this way through the valve. And it's got this little swing flappy over here that allows water to go through it that way and it stops water coming from this side. Okay, these don't work. Then the other option you've got are these spring check valves. Now these spring check valves are again a one-way valve where they allow water to go this way but they won't allow water to come from this side. And they've got a little piperki inside here that pops up and down. But what you'll find is that this thing's got guides on it and those guides snap off. So this doesn't work. We took that a little bit further. We thought we could increase the water volume in our valve. So we had a piece of uh, pipe vinyl fabricated like this to extend the length of our spring check valve and you know what this doesn't work got a number of these guys from inside these spring check valves that have popped out because their guides have broken i've used cheap valves that i've bent this guy isn't even round anymore we then upped our game into one of these large swing check valves and what we did is we found that the hinges wore and you can't replace the flappy thing. So this doesn't work. We've gone along and taken these swing check valves and if you can see inside here, we've added a lead piece of lead to the flap to increase the weight of the flap so that more velocity of water travels through the valve before your valve swings shut. That worked for a little bit. Where's the holes on the hinges? So that doesn't work. I decided to bugger these brass valves, they're too expensive. I can't keep coughing out that buck, so I went and made myself a valve like this. Basically galvanized fittings, and all it is inside here was a hollow piece. It had a piece of metal welded inside on this edge over here, and had a ball bearing inside here, massive ass ball bearing. So that ball bearing would push up against the one side, and it would shut that in. And again, this is a one-way valve. It's leaked a little bit, but this worked better than any of these brass valves that I had. But it wasn't as efficient in the long term of my outflow. I needed more water, so mm, this didn't work. I went along and tried PVC thinking that uh, maybe PVC would work. So these things, this lasted about a day and then it popped. That doesn't work. So I stepped it up a notch and I went and got myself a big ass butterfly valve. And now this thing has got two little flappies inside here that close up so water can come this way through the valve, but it can't go this way. Those butterfly things, so what ended up happening here? The springs broke. You think I could find spare springs? No. So this didn't work. So then I decided I was going to make my own waste valve and I put this guy together. And now what this guy was, he just had a piece of tire on the end of a thread bar, an all thread, and this all thread would pop up and down like that, and the tire would effectively, would close up against this on every cycle. This worked really well. It's actually the best valve that I had. And so we then decided, okay, let's put all this stuff together. Let's figure out what worked and what didn't work and we're gonna go ahead and make our own one. And we did just that. We made a big, 
four inch entire ram pump out of galvanized fittings and the simplest valves that you can make. To get away from all of these expensive parts that keep on breaking, we wanted to be more independent. That system is all up in my video, you can go check it out. The other thing I would recommend not going without are pressure gauges. You have no idea what's going on inside of your ramp pump unless you've got a pressure gauge attached to it. So that when you're tinkering and when you're optimizing, you know where you are on these pressures. So the moral of the story here is that these straight up bought valves, spring checks and swing checks, these brass ones that you see all over the place, they do work. But if you have a high powered system, this is not gonna work for you. So rather than waste your money on all of these little things from the beginning, Take my advice, start to make your own valves. In my Ultimate Ramp Pump video, I show you the way that you can make these things. These are mistakes you don't want to make. It comes down to you at the end of the day, what are your goals for the system? How much water do you want delivered? And what is your head height that you need to push up? How much head is coming onto your ram? Because that's gonna determine your sheer forces on these things. But thank you for joining. If you're still here and you're at the end of my video, please hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, hit the thumbs up, give me a like, drop a comment in the comment section. All of these things help bump the videos up and get noticed by YouTube. Hope you've enjoyed that video. And I'm going to see you guys back here next week, Sunday, for another brew.